Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you might remember back in the Warzone 1 days, I used to do these videos where I'd play like a solos match of BR, and then I'd commentate over the gameplay afterwards and kind of just try and explain my thinking of how I was going to play something. And I've always wanted to do those videos again for DMZ, but because I'm always playing with Stod, it, it doesn't really work because we're already doing the live gameplay. But I thought today this would be a great round to do that because I'm playing solo in DMZ here. But what happens in this round just should not have happened. I spent about 30 minutes in this round playing this game and I only had one reason to come in. Now, as you can see here, I'm making some changes in the graphical settings and anybody who's also a content creator for Modern Warfare 2 will know what I'm doing. I'm changing my graphical settings so that I can get a better image. Now, if any of you have watched my video from last week and seen this thumbnail, in about 30 seconds, you're going to see the shot that I took from this little bit of video here. I, I just went into a match and I needed a screenshot of the extraction chopper for my thumbnail. And it's impossible to do that in any other mode. So you have to go into a round of DMZ, call the chopper in, wait for it to come in, and then just hope to high hell that it's coming in at a nice angle that you can get a good screenshot for it. And that was literally my only mission for, for this round. I just thought, I'll come in solo, I'll just bring in one gun just in case I get into any trouble. Luckily, as you can see, my spawn was right next to the extraction chopper, so I didn't really have to do very much. And uh, look, see here, look, I switched to my fists, which is obviously something that covers up less of the screen. And then I've taken my FOV into 60 so that the helicopter's nice and big. And you can see here I'm just positioning and it's something like that frame right there is where I took that for the thumbnail of the video. And I thought, well, that's it. I'll just, I'll just get on the chopper. But you might have just seen there, I just got shot at by a sniper who's sitting on the hill far away and he lands the shot. And I'm thinking, right, I just need to get on this chopper and get out of here. I'm using the chopper as cover stim up to make sure I'm at as much health as I can get. Still trying to get the right screenshot just in case. And then I'm thinking, changing my graphics settings. No, he's come back again. So he's still going for the shot. I've not shot at him once. I've not even threatened him remotely. I did scope in on his position, but that was about it. Didn't actually fire the shot. And I thought, right, I'm getting out of here because I've got the thumbnail that I needed for the screenshot. But I thought, you know what? No, you shot at me unprovoked. I was doing you no harm, no damage whatsoever. I'm going to fling some shots back at him. But what goes on for the rest of this round is honestly quite remarkable. And I think it shows exactly why I'm continuing to play DMZ over Warzone Battle Royale. Because the stuff that happens in this mode, it just it just doesn't happen in, in any other game mode. Now you think at this point, whilst I'm just looting around the hospital trying to find some, some gear, because obviously he's taken all of my plates here now. So uh, I'm, I'm running on pretty much just pure health at this point. That I would, um, I'd switch the FOV back from, from 60 to the 120 that I normally play at. But no, I've left it. Because I'm in panic mode thinking that the guy's following me. Because he did fire shots at me as I parachuted out of the Exfil chopper. So I'm, I'm just furiously trying to find as much ammo and plates as I can possibly get. Now at this point here, I have chosen to... Uh, to scale it back, but I only went to 80 FOV, and I can't remember why I put it to 80. Um, I think it's because I was hearing the shooting in the background or, or something like that. And this gameplay was recorded over a week ago. I wanted to do this commentary a little bit earlier, but I just haven't had the time. Um, I don't know why I put it to 80. I can only assume that maybe I thought at some point I might get another screenshot during this round. And I thought, well, I've already captured one at 60 FOV, so maybe if I put it to 80, That'll make the image look a little bit less huge on the screen. But if there's anything that comes along that I can get a good screenshot of, then 80 FOV is going to look better than, than 120. I think at this point, though, I'm starting to wonder whether I can get back to the extraction point and maybe sort of get out of this mode again. But as you're going to see, things don't, uh, things don't quite go to plan. And there we go. The extraction chopper is ready to go again. But yeah, this becomes my little, uh, my little viewing point for, for the next couple of minutes. And as you can see, I literally am channeling my inner Bushwookie whilst wearing the uh, the Jack Lynx ghillie suit. So, um, yeah, I, I literally become a bush for the next couple of minutes. Moving. Finally managed to spot the guy over here, but of course the spotting in this game doesn't particularly work very well. So there is a guy over there. And I'm thinking, right, he's gone off to the right-hand side. This is probably my opportunity to call in the extraction again. Maybe give it another go. 
see if I can get myself out of here without too much bother. Because you've got to remember, right? I'm running right now. I've got a durable gas mask. I've got a large bag, a three-plate vest. I think there's a self-res in my bag as well. I do have a sniper rifle in my primary slot. My secondary doesn't have anything in it. But as you can see, it's not just me providing a bit of overwatch on the extraction chopper. He actually gets me. And that's because I'm not able to run full plates. I, at no point during my looting session over, uh, over by the other hospital did I actually find enough plates to give me full ammunition. And this guy thinks he can take full advantage of the fact that uh, he now must know that I'm either running at low health or I've replated, but I'm in a vulnerable position. I've got absolutely no cover out in the open. And the only thing I can do is swim away here. And I remember thinking at this point, it would have been so easy for him to push me here. All he needed to do was continue to run down that hill, come down onto the riverbank, and I would have been pretty much cattle to the slaughter for him because I'm out in the open. There's no way that I could really push back on him. But I can't spot him. So we go back to looting a little bit because we're still running plateless at this point. I've, I've got 150 health. Is it 100 health or is it 150? It's 100 health, isn't it? It's not 150. 150 is your plates. So I've only got 100 health, which means one sniper shot to the upper chest or the uh, or the head, and I'm I'm down. I mean, yes, I've got the self res again. I do have another one in my bag, but uh, I'm, I'm I'm feeling very very naked. And they must have been able to see me because I couldn't see where that precision airstrike came from. But I got lucky and managed to get out of its way. It was very close to where I was. So right now we've got a nice big flank going. We're back up above the position where we started. Um, still plateless, I might add. Still plateless. I could have made a, a beeline for a, a buy station. I suppose I could have gone for a buy station, but um, I wanted to... I've, I'm checking the tower again because I know they're still around here somewhere. You might have already spotted them, but it took me a little while to, to actually find this guy. But yeah, I could have gone and diverted to a buy station and got plates, but unfortunately I just wanted to get out of the match. I just wanted to get back to the extraction so that I could get out of here. But yeah, you might have actually seen this guy for a good 30 seconds or so. And I'm still missing him. Look, I'm looking at the AI sniper in the woods. I've already spotted this guy. You've probably seen him already. If you haven't, well, in a few seconds, you'll probably figure out where I look. And you'll be able to spot him. There you go. Made themselves pretty obvious running out on that bit of open. But there was a guy standing near that bush for a good 30 seconds. And I didn't notice either of them. So we get both players down here. Now, of course, from the tower, there was only one player. So I thought it was another solo. You might recognize that name. On the uh, on the far left side in the kill feed there, the dark Agnan guy. That was the guy that sniped me from the tower and got me downed. And this PHP chair 79, I think the other guy's name is. He must have been his teammate because there's no way they're going to be so close to each other that uh, that they're not going to be friends. So that's two of an enemy team down, of which we know one of them was shooting at me previously. But their bodies are still on the ground, so. A teammate's going to be around here somewhere. So we're probably looking at a trio at this point. That's kind of the information that I've got. And there he is. Should have been an easy follow-up on that second shot. And then we actually get downed by another player. Raul SFC, his name is. Of course, I have to use the self-revive pistol here because that's what I've got equipped. But you can see how brutal that was. One shot from the sniper because I've got no plates and I'm down out of the out of the game for a good seven to eight seconds whilst I revive. And again, a little bit of a strange decision from that player because obviously there was a third player just below me that I was sniping at just before I got shot. And he was pretty close to me. He wasn't that far away. He could have made a push at that point. He could have decided to, to make a push. Might have spotted him just parachuting down below me there. Always got to check for uh, the plates. And notice that little ping there. Sounded like one of those little radars that you get on the ground. Moving. You know when you kill too many AI and it drops like a little radar. And you get a little ping. So as you can see here, that's one player still down on the ground. I've downed another. So that's one player dead on the ground. One player downed at that body. And then one ran left and one ran right. Just got to get the finish on this guy. So it's actually a four-man. That Rao SFC was the guy that sniped me earlier that got me down the second time. He's part of their team. So this is actually a four-man. 
managed to pick out another one of their players that was was going left. The player on the right that I saw disappear as I tried to finish the guy that I downed, he's kind of disappeared from my vision. And I don't know where he's gone. Now, I know that the guy is on the left. So I've got a, a pretty sort of general area where that guy might be. So I thought I'd take the position on the right and see if I can pick out where that person was. Because to me, if I don't know where the player is on the right-hand side, I'd rather try and focus and scope out that area to see if I can figure out where they are. And how have I not noticed where this guy is? I'm literally looking right at him on the screen. You can see him, can't you? There he is. How did I not see him? I just... Uh, th this is the thing. I was saying to Stod the other day. I actually had no idea that you could get up on those signs and you could sit in between the two billboards in the middle. There's a ladder that allows you to get up in between the two. I had no idea that was the case until just a few days ago. I think actually there I ran past a plate that was on the ground, so that's my own stupid fault. Because I'm still running plateless at this point. We're still plateless. Kind of can't believe that I've actually survived this long. But the guy that was in that billboard, by the way, was the dark Agnan guy again. But that means that there's two players that potentially are dead on the hillside because there was one under the tree and then the other guy that was trying to res him, we got him downed. And then there's potentially this third guy that's now pleading for help at the top of the billboard who's also down as well. So right now, as far as the information that I've got, there's only one person up from their four-man team. So I'm feeling like a bit of a god, a plateless god, because <laughs> I've managed to take down three of them at the moment. Channeling my inner Wookiee again here. Taking up a rather bushy position. Because of the ATFOV, I'm struggling to sort of figure out which hill I shot those players on. I'm trying to figure out which way someone might go and which teammates they might res first. Moving. I have to be very patient there. Gets another two down. Finish on one. Finish on two. So the guy had worked his way round and res the two players that were on the hill. And then that player had moved off to try and get the res on his teammate on the billboard. Which now means once again... I don't know why I didn't take that other shot there. There's now only one player still up. There is still only one player up. The billboard guy is still down. The two players that were dead on the hill had been rezzed. And I got them back down again. So we're back down to another 1v1, despite me playing against a four-man team here. All while this is happening, by the way, I'm still trying to get myself back to the extraction because I don't really want to be in this server. Like, as much as I'm having a good time just messing with this four-man, at the end of the day, I actually had a video that I needed to finish. I needed to finish the thumbnail. But I can't just quit a game of DMZ. You have to extract, otherwise you lose all your gear. And I didn't want to lose my three plate, so I had to keep going, unfortunately. And this is the last guy here. He's doing his own flank, uh, his own flank to try and get his uh, his teammates back. Enemy mark. And there it is. Yanan's my dad, the fourth player that not once during any of that gunfight situation there was I uh, was I able to down, and then. As I take down the foreman, they are now finished and dead. There's no way they're coming back. I get shot at by another team who look like they're at the police station. So once again, we become a bush wookie. See that sniper shot as it hit the water there? Did you see that? <laughs> they were still firing in my general direction. At this point, honestly, I think audibly on, on in the game, I'm like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm just trying to get out of the game. I didn't want to deal with that four-man in the first place, and I sure as hell don't want to deal with another team that are sitting on police station. Because they shot through those bushes there. So now I'm doing the exact opposite to what I did for the four-man. I'm retracing my steps back round the other side of the river. This extraction is basically in a giant basin, by the way. There are so many viewpoints that you can be looked at on this extraction. It's one of the ones that provides the most action. But also, I think it's one of the ones that's most treacherous, especially if you're a solo, because trying to get out of here, like, I can look down onto this extraction now. Look at that. You can see it over on the right with the smoke. That is so easy for me to look at with a sniper. People sitting on the police station over there, they can look at you. If you go to the hospital on the other side of the train tracks, they can look at you from there. If you get up on the highway that's over on the left-hand side of the screen there, yeah, you can see it coming into view. You can be looked at in the extraction chopper. This is just a giant bowl. Look, you can see it everywhere. 
all those different angles of looking in at that extraction. The reason I've come over on this hill is so that I can uh, I can loot these bodies. Because I haven't had plates all game, guys. But I'm very, very, very wary of the roof of police station. You can see me sort of like moving my view there to try and to try and see what's going on. And look, these guys have got no plates. <laughs> They've got absolutely no plates whatsoever. And in comes a player chopper. It doesn't it doesn't get much worse than that. It doesn't get much worse than that, does it? I think those players in the chopper, by the way, uh, were ghosted because they didn't pop up on the UAV. But these guys on the police station, they weren't ghosted. They did pop up on the UAV. Me thinking smartly here, take a shot from the from the hill, but being laid prone on top of it was probably not the best idea. But look, as you can see, two players there sitting on police roof. They're already scoped in on me. And there's the chopper. Now, this guy didn't do me any harm. Just in case he was looking down, I was, was doing a little peeky peek over to the top there. But these guys are clearly trying to shoot somebody that I can't see. But they've already taken pot shots at me when I was down in the river. And this is the guy they must have been shooting at. This is all just coming back to me now, by the way. It's Like I say, it's been over a week since I played this match. But it's, uh, normally I do the commentary almost straight afterwards because that way I can give you like my actual thoughts. But this team, uh, these, this team had shot me unprovoked when I was in the river. I hadn't fired a shot at them. I don't know if I got a double plate break or just a single plate break there. But look, that guy is clearly just trying to extract. And the police guys are just like, nah, we're going to kill you, mate. So I, I reckon he was another solo. And then the guy that was in the chopper, I don't know if he dropped his teammate. If that, if that guy was a solo on the extraction... The guy that then dropped the chopper over on the left, up the hill there, where I've just looked. I'm wondering whether he was part of the team. Maybe they were a duo and they split up to call in the extraction. But didn't realise there was a team on top of the police station. And I'm just annoying these guys here. I'm just annoying them. This way, they're not going to be able to, to do a huge amount of damage to everybody. And look, we actually get the down on that guy. Which was a really nice snipe, I must say. And you can hear the clicking. In comes the gas. It's starting to get a little bit squeaky bum time. I'm starting to panic at this point because I'm like, well, if I don't get to this extraction and call it in before the gas comes over, I'm going to have to drive past the police station in one of the vehicles that's over here and I'm going to get blasted by that team on the roof. I've got no plates, so I'm literally 100 health. And I thought maybe, can I assimilate with this guy? Maybe I could get a chance in. But I think he might have already gone at that point. Either that or he wasn't in that extraction chopper. It wasn't obvious where that guy was. The guy that's on the top of the hill from the chopper, no idea where he went. Absolutely none. He dropped his chopper, so I'm assuming it, it ran out of... It ran out of health, maybe? It was smoking a little bit. So maybe, maybe it just got absolutely smashed by the team on police station. But ever since I downed that player on top of police, they've not peaked again. They've not looked... And you'll see me now countless times checking. Oh, look, there you go. They smoke. So they haven't peaked it at all until that point. And then they smoke at the precise moment that I can then call in the exfil, which they will see anyway. They'll be able to see that. Of course, at this point, the LTV doesn't have one of its tyres blown up. But I've called in the extraction before the, uh, before the gas washes over it. And in Season 2... You can call in the extraction at any point to the moment it's about to touch the gas and it will still come in, as you're going to see here. So even though now they've said negative for extraction, that's not true. It's negative for extraction if you called it in beyond this point. It wouldn't, it wouldn't come in. But as you'll see now in a second, as we put on our durable gas mask on the minimap there, lo and behold, in comes the extraction chopper. My saviour is here. And you've got to remember, guys, all I wanted from this round was a screenshot of the extraction chopper. That is all I wanted. <laughs> and it took multiple downs and finishes on a four-man team and the complete outmaneuverability of the two-man on top of police station to be able to extract. Westy the Bushwookie with no plates and a sniper rifle made it out of the DMZ solo. If you like this style of DMZ content, make sure you go and smash a like on the uh, on the video. Let me know in the comments. But thanks very much for watching, guys. Subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the near future.